that aside, with bugged out accessories, damn, that actually looks fire. Like, yeah, accessories bugging out, whatever, but bro, this actually looks really cool. Yeah, so I'm very happy to see this, and I believe that this actually will work with basically any single character. Glitch effects in games have always really interested me, because what is a glitch effect, right? There's a lot of, you know, different ways that you can add one. Some people make it so that, like, I don't know, like, a, some pixels of the character are, like, displaced for a little bit, or, like, half of the character is, like, slightly, you know, tilted to the right, or, or some characters have, like, you know, these, like, color things, or, like, they have, like, a red version of them behind like you know something like that there's a lot of different ways to add glitches and so here i am i was sitting and i, I was thinking what would be a cool feature that i could add to make a video on obviously you know I, I look for video ideas obviously i do that but then i came to this interesting idea of what if i were to try and implement a glitchy like effect to a character right so then i began brainstorming how would i do that what would i actually need to make an effect because like i said there's many different ways to add a glitch effect you could either, like I said, you know, displace how the character looks, you know, add colors behind them, whatever. And I started to think, okay, how about this? What if I created a red and blue version of the character? So like some image, right, of the character. And then that those images would just like kind of be glitching around the player, right? But like I said, I think for something like Roblox, this would be a very simple effect, which also you, you probably could do if you, you know, follow with the video or if you just want to watch how I do this, that, that's also fine. And the biggest reason why I chose this is because I've actually already done a very similar thing before. So, okay, let me quickly visualize like what I want to happen, okay? Basically, I have my character. And then what I want to do is, let me just show you. There's an item called highlight, which we're not going to use, but I want to add another version of my character. So I basically want to clone my character, you could say. And then I want that clone of the character to have a red highlight and then another one with a blue highlight. And then I want to have those clones of the characters be like, you know, glitching around my character. So my character will still be, you know, in one spot. They'll still be, you know, fine, but they'll just have these colors kind of you know jittering around them which means that number one we need to basically create a new render of our character which okay and number two we have to somehow take those renders and ensure that they are always behind my character so this is kind of difficult because when i say that i want a render of my character i'm not talking about like an actual 3d model in the game i'm talking about i want an image of my character so i want to take the 3d parts you know that my character has and turn those 3d parts into a 2d image which will be behind my player so hopefully now that you're kind of understanding what i'm talking about the question then becomes okay well how do we make that image and anyone who's watched my top video about optical illusions will know that actually the way that you can do this is by using something called a viewport frame as a user interface. So I assume most of you watched that video, but for those who didn't, a viewport frame is simply a user interface item where you can add in a part and then that part will then show itself as a 2D user interface. And what I did in that video is I took the viewport frame, right? I scaled it to fit the entire screen and I basically made a script which every single like frame, it cloned all of the parts of my character, it added those parts into the viewport frame, and yeah, that was basically it. And then the video also like took that character and made them like very low frame rate, which made for like this, you know, very cool looking effect. But here, all I want to do is I just want to have a version of my character that looks 3D, that actually matches my character, but isn't 3D and is simply a user interface. So let me show you exactly how I did this, right? To anyone who's watched the other video can skip this, obviously. But really, all you have to do here is, uh, well, first of all, let's make a variable for the viewport frame. So local view is equal to script.parent wait for child viewport frame and then we'll make a loop okay while task wait do this is the fastest loop in the game and basically this will just run every single frame or so right and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say view.current camera so each viewport frame needs to have an actual camera right because if it's gonna render a 3d part it needs to know which direction we're looking from right so the current camera will be our current camera and then we're gonna loop through for iv in game players local player character gets the sentence so we're gonna loop through every single part of our character and then just say if v is a base part if it's a part right then v clone parent is equal to view end basically if it's a part we're gonna make a clone of it and we're gonna add it inside of the viewport frame and then the very last thing to do would just be to uh, clear all children of the viewport frame right before you know cloning them again 
And what this is gonna do, if I play the game right now, is it's gonna give us this effect. Now, obviously, you can see that, you know, there, there are slight issues here. Like, for example, my headphones are no longer shiny. The accessories are all messed up. I mean, this just doesn't look right. But you can understand what I'm talking about here, right? We just need to make a character like this because all of this is user interface, right? And then I just need to make two more of these, one being red, one being blue, and then just add them behind my character and then obviously script them to be glitching around my player. And yeah, so let's actually just do exactly that. And real quick, uh, you probably noticed how horrendous all of that looked, right? So what I'll do instead, because I'm sure, look, I'm sure that there's a way for me to figure out how to make the accessories work or whatever, but honestly, I don't want to do that. Instead, what I'll do is I'll make this blocky rig, I'll call him a starter character, and then I'll place him inside of starter player. What this will do is now my character will be replaced with this block. And so yeah, now that looks a lot better. Like he actually looks like a real 3D model, but it's not because this is just an image. And the way you know that this is an image, by the way, is look at this, right? You can still see him through parts. So right now, like I said, I got to make two more viewport frames, you know, one red, one blue. Like I said, tweak their colors and then also tweak the script to work for all of the viewport frames. So I'll just do a quick time lapse of that. And okay, there we go. So what I did right now is I made a folder where I put all of the viewports. Uh, the red viewport and the blue viewport both have, you know, tweaked colors. And the only change that I made with the script is now I just also loop through the folder so that it works for every single viewport. And so if I played the game right now, you don't actually really see the colors. And the reason you don't see the colors is because I took, you know, our character viewport frame and I made it so that it's always going to be on top of the other viewports. So really all we need to do is just then tweak the positions of these viewports. So for example, if I take the blue viewport, right, it's on the same position right now as with our character viewport. But I can literally very simply set the scale to be like 0.1 or something. And then here it is. Or like 0.05 or something and then it's over here. Or even 0.01. Yeah, and so immediately, yeah, like, look at this, right? This already creates this, like, almost glitch-looking effect. Obviously, we're not there yet, right? They still should be kind of, you know, glitching around the player. But I hope you can kind of see the vision here, right? Like, this is basically exactly what I was aiming for. And I'll also just mention real quick that if you are, like, maybe following along with this video, or, like, maybe, I don't know, something just inspired you in this video, where I'm, like, doing a bunch of this cool stuff, and you're like, whoa, I need to script myself now, right? I do have a course linked in the description and the pinned comment where I teach just everything about Roblox Studio, and uh, the course is, like, 7 hours, it's $40, it has a free preview, so you can go check that out. So yeah, like I said, if you're a beginner, that might be something for you to look into. But, you know, plugging my course aside, um, all we need to do now is just make a another script which takes the red and the blue viewport positions and just changes them very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table of both the red and the blue viewport, right? So local red blue table is going to be equal to, and then I'll just say script.parent wait for child folder wait for child uh, red viewport, and then we'll do the exact same thing but this time for the blue viewport. And then all we have to do is just say while task waits, uh, let's do 0.1 seconds. So every 0.1 seconds, we're just going to loop through this red blue table, meaning we're just going to go through the red viewport and then the blue viewport. And then we're just going to set their position equal to be some randomized number. So their position right now is 0, 0, 0, 0. And as you may remember, what I did before is I set the position to be 0 0.01 or negative 0 0.01. So all I want to do is just take a random number from, you know, 0 0.01 to like negative 0 0.01 and then just set that to be the scale of X and then the scale of Y. And yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm making an X scale, which is a math.random from negative 15 to positive 15. The reason why I'm doing it like this, like why I'm dividing by a, by a thousand is I'm honestly not too sure if that's how Roblox works, but I'm pretty sure that when you use like really low numbers, math.random starts like not working correctly. Because what, what I want is I want a random number from uh you know negative 0 0.015 to positive 0 0.015 but those are very little numbers so just to be safe i'm using bigger numbers and then just dividing the results by a thousand and so if i play the game right now let's see what happens 
Yeah, there we go. Look at that. So now our character is successfully <laughs> looking like they're glitching. Now, I'll be honest, something still feels like it's kind of missing, you know? Like, yeah, the character is glitching, but it doesn't really feel like it's glitching because, like, our character is still in front, right? So, yeah, sure, they have this, like, nice, like, aura around them, but, like, the character itself looks fine. So I'm actually thinking right now, while we're looping, what if we just give both the red viewport and the blue viewport a very small chance to be like in front of our character? Because right now how it's working is that every single viewport has this property called Z index. And in short, the higher this number is, the more in front the viewport is, right? So the, basically the viewport with the highest Z index number will always be on top, uh, than the one with the lower Z, Z index number. So what we can do is just have like a 33% chance every 0.1 seconds to just set the Z index of one of these viewports to be higher than 5. So what we could do is we could say if math.random, uh, and I guess honestly a 33% chance is a little bit too much, so maybe we could do like a 1 in 8. So if math.random 1 in 8 is equal to 1, which is again a 1 in 8 chance, then we're going to say v.z index is equal to like 10 or something. And so once we do that, at the very beginning of the loop, I guess let's set the z index uh, actually back to being 1. And yeah, so with this, this should hopefully uh, work and make it look... Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, now they're glitching. Now, yeah, honestly, I have no words. This is literally like a perfect looking glitch effect. Uh, I'm just trying to think... Yeah, so as you look at this and kind of gaze upon this beautiful creation, obviously, I'm just trying to think right now, like, what else could we add to make this look better? Because I'm honestly not even sure. Like, do we do we need anything else? Actually, you know what? One more thing that I think would be interesting to add is, what if every now and then, the character's position will slightly change? So maybe what we could do is like every three seconds, we're going to loop through every single character in the game and then give them like a 50% chance to like slightly alter their position. So we can randomly like, I don't know, put them in the air a little bit or like put them to the right or maybe like put them a little down. Just making it clear that they are actually glitching out by actually like, you know, teleporting them to like a small distance. And really, this will be the easiest script of this video because I like this does require some thinking and some level of understanding of Roblox Studio, which... Again, I have a course, but this next script will be easy because, uh, first of all, we're going to be making a server script because here uh, we're going to affect the actual game, like the actual position of players instead of just whatever the player sees. So what I'll do is I'll just say for I, a uh, player in game players gets, gets players like so. And we'll first of all just check if the player does have a character. So if not, uh, player dot character then continue end meaning continue meaning like move on to the next player and skip this one and yeah so here because we're dealing with an actual 3d world uh we just need x y and z coordinates which we can just randomize all of these so i can make a local x variable that is then equal to math uh dot random let's say negative three to positive three yeah, and then we can just do the same for every single axis, except maybe Y, because I don't want the player to just, like, go through the floor. Although that would be kind of cool, I guess, but let's just, let's do negative 2 instead of negative 3. And yeah, then all we gotta do is just say, okay, player.character.humanoid root part, which is, like, the main part of every single character. And we will say plus equals, which just means we're going to add on a position to dot position, so we're going to get its position. And plus equals just means that we're going to be adding a position on top of, like, the existing position. And I'll say vector 3 dot new, which is an x, y, and z value. And then we'll give it the x, we'll give it the y, and we'll give it the z. And then the only thing that's left to do is just put it into a loop. And yeah, there we go. Uh, a final thing that I actually will do is I'll just basically make it a 33% chance that the player will not get teleported. So what I'll do is I'll just say uh, if math.random from 1 to 3 is equal to 1, then also continue end, right? So basically, if it's 1, which is a 33% chance, then the player will not get teleported. And uh, yeah, I mean, let's play right now and just let's just see how this works. Oh, yeah, there we go. You saw that? The character got like slightly displayed. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Yeah, so now if I walk around, uh, we should see the character start to glitch out, quote unquote. I mean, they are glitching out right now. Yep, see, there we go. And you know what? Honestly, just for fun, let's just make this a lot quicker. Because, I don't know, three seconds, bro? Too slow. 0 0.5 seconds, okay? Let's go. Let's see how this looks. My camera's bugged. Why? What? Yeah, awesome. Uh, so it's, it's a little hard to play like this. Uh, so I'll probably 
reverts it back to being, uh, let's say two seconds, I guess, I, I feel like three was a bit too long. And yeah, there we go. There is our glitch effect, right? So we made an actual effect, and we've also made it like an actual, I guess you could call it gameplay mechanic, kind of, where the player is actually like being displaced in the space-time continuum, I guess, I don't know. Like, I don't know, what, what do people like call glitching nowadays? Like, I know a lot of movies say like, oh yeah, he's glitching because he fell through this machine and now he's like in like parallel universes or whatever. Which honestly would be a fire game. Like honestly, imagine if you have a game where the character is gl glitching out, right? And then maybe like you can press a button and then the character gets like transported into like a different dimension or something. And then maybe the character like turns blue. And then now uh, instead of it being a red and a blue aura around them, it's a red aura and a gray aura to like indicate the other dimension. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore, but that actually would be a fire game idea. So if you could make that, bro, do join the Discord, post your game, DM me if the game actually looks good. If the game looks terrible, obviously don't don't DM me. But yeah, you know, obviously with this being just a fun effect, um, it does have a surprising amount of uses and potential cool ideas that it could be used in. Uh, and so yeah, so what I'll do, honestly, is I'll make this into a game. Uh, I'll have to tweak the script a bit so that the, this, this effect works on every single player and not just you. But yeah, uh, so go to the pinned comment right now. Um, obviously, you know, check out my course, blah, blah, blah. But I will have a link to this game in the description. So, you know, go ahead, try it out, play it with friends, and, you know, see your character with their broken accessories, you know, being glitched out. Which actually, I guess as a final thing, let's see how my character would look. Because again, like I said, my accessories were bugging out, but that aside, with bugged out accessories, damn, that actually looks fire. Like yeah, accessories bugging out, whatever, but bro, this actually looks really cool. Yeah, so I'm very happy to see this, and I believe that this actually will work with basically any single character. And so yeah, you know, leave a comment, let me know what uh, this could be used for. Uh, no more edging comments, please, those are getting a little annoying. Uh, I would like some smart comments from now on. And yeah, you know, join the Discord, check out the course. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification, I don't, I don't know, whatever the YouTubers say these days. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.